Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you stopping in here today and, and hanging out with us for a little bit. We're back over here at the wood barn and it's, uh, it's one of those just absolutely gorgeous spring days. Got a little bit of wind, um, but that's to be expected for this time of year. I hope the audio is okay. I've got the, the windscreen here on the mic, but hopefully it's not getting anything uh, of any type of interference back. But I want to talk to you all today a little bit about uh, lumber, firewood, logs, you know, all things revolving around that log to, to lumber product or, or however direction you want to go with that. But what made me think about this was I'm, I'm getting closer to getting done with my sawmill. And so I've, I've stockpiled, a, you know, several logs, some of them bigger than others that I've gathered from, you know, some of my neighbor's property, our property, just different places around that I've uh, been able to salvage some, some decent saw logs uh, from mostly red oak, a few pine, a couple of cherries, but for the most part, red oak, which is a good building grade material. You know, around here, a lot of people use it for, for barn siding, fence boards and framing material you know for barns or, or sheds in a in a true dimensional lumber in our area it red oak is is you know readily available there's no shortage of red oak it's everywhere that's probably our uh, most predominant tree uh, in our area here in east tennessee red oaks and white oaks but with that being said you know the market kind of varies you know and the needs vary depending on supply and demand just the same with firewood i wanted to go over a few things with you today i uh, did some research kind of some cost co comparisons and just some talking points that i wanted to share with you all that i have found and just give everybody a little bit of a uh, a broad knowledge of what i've been able to come up with and these may not be all the correct answers for your area but you know and they might not be correct totally in my area but this is just what i've been able to to find and, and research out so you know if you if you hear anything that uh that you want to correct me on or or touch on please be sure to by all means put it in the comments because i'm i'm learning this as as well as i go so just trying to share with you what i've learned we've got a uh, a sawmill just down the the road from from my house a, a rather large sawmill uh, that does a lot of hardwoods and their main seller is cross ties. So they'll take the, the red oak logs, turn those into cross tie, you know, dimensions, and they'll load them on rail carts, haul them out, and then they'll take them somewhere else to be treated or whatever process they do to get them ready to put down on the railroad. So uh, I have a, a very local, pretty large scale sawmill close to me. So the log that I that I reached out to them about, uh, I'll, I'll put a, a link up top in the videos of where uh, we pulled that log out of the woods with my my brother's line truck, dig, digger truck, and it was a, it was a fairly large red oak that had blown down in a storm, and it was roughly the the saw log that I got out of it. We drug out one piece was right at 40 feet long, and average diameter you know i'm going to say it was a little bit oblong on one end and just a, a hair smaller on the other um it was i'm going to say on average 26 inches in diameter that's what we're going to base all of this information on is a 26 inch diameter log 39 and a half feet long so i i reached out to that sawmill sent the uh, the estimator some pictures of it you know with tape measure on it all angles and the complete log form and asked him what based on what he saw in the pictures what that log would bring at the at the sawmill down there and what he told me back kind of surprised me 
I've never sold logs like that to, to anyone. So I was just curious. And at the time he told me, this was right at around the first of the year, he told me anywhere from 300 to $500. I thought, wow, that's not quite what I expected. But like I said, it, it was red oak. It's not a, you know, not a white oak, not a cherry, not a black walnut, just, you know, a common red oak. So I kind of thought that was a little bit cheap, in my opinion. Um, so that, that of course, got my, my mind going and, and thinking things through. So I'm thinking, okay, well, that just seems, like I said, kind of cheap. So I started running numbers, and then I thought, okay, well, just out of curiosity, if I cut this, this you know, this log up into firewood, how much is that going to make in firewood? And, you know, you see that big log laid out there, you know, in its entirety, and you're thinking, man, there's a lot of firewood in that thing. And so I got to running the numbers on it, and uh, it kind of surprised me. I did the calculations on it on a saw log volume calculator and, you know, put in my, my length, my diameter, and it came up to 145.63 cubic feet for this log. And of course I, I made sure I ran these numbers again and did it again, and, and that's what I came up with on this calculator. So that equates to basically 1.14 cords. So I thought, okay, well, that didn't go as I had it thought in my head, you know, because say it brought a cord, that's, you know, at what we get around here for Red Oak, what I get for delivered. I'm looking at best $375 for the cord, not counting the amount of labor and time that it would take to cut that log up, split it, stack it, let it cure, you know, all that goes with that. So, okay, well, that's not worth doing for firewood. Definitely not. So, um, so then I went on to the next, next phase of this. And like I said, you know, where I'm getting close to having the sawmill wrapped up, I'm just kind of curious. I, I want to learn more about, you know, pricing and, you know, how to scale logs and, and how to kind of determine what, you know, what kind of uh, board feed I'm going to get out of a log. So, so I started running the numbers on, on this particular log. Once I put it in the, the, uh, the estimation counter, and this is based off of the dual log rule. Uh, and, you know, and it accounts for, of course, your diameter, your length, and approximates your your waste that you'll get um, when you mill the log. You know your your slabs on the sides and just you know what you won't be able to get out of it. Once I put that information into the Doyle log rule, uh, it came out to 1194.9 board feet out of that one log. I thought that was pretty good. Sounds and seems like a lot of a lot of you know lumber there. And of course, you know, a board foot is one inch thick, 12 inch wide board, 12 inches long is the, is your board foot. Started doing a little bit more research and trying to get some market data. And I know that this is, you know, it's going to vary a lot depending on the time of year, supply and demand of the area, you know, cause there's parts of the country that are, you know, red oak is not as uh, prominent as it is around here. So I feel like we would be here in our area probably on the lower side just because there is so much red oak around us. But calculating just what I've saw online and some research that I've done, looked at some forums, the best that I can kind of tell an average price is around $3.50 a board foot for kiln dried red oak. And so, like I said, I've saw it, some estimations over $4 a board foot some down to the lower three dollars per board foot now and all this is kiln dried as well so so take that into consideration that is that average i'm coming up with with a three dollars and fifty cents per board foot is kiln dried rough sawn lumber so just just so we're all on a kind of a, a good playing field there and and know what we're know what we're talking about that's what we're basing this information off of and so with that being said that an average of three dollars and fifty cents per board foot it looks like based on that eleven hundred and uh ninety eleven hundred and ninety two board feet yeah um 
I should be able to yield a little over four thousand dollars out of that log in lumber. I think the exact amount is forty one eighty two uh, and some change. So, like I said, that's four quarter kiln dried rough sawn red oak. I was I was very pleased with that number. Now, of course, you know that's like everything else. That's like you see something online that someone's got for sale. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're going to be able to get out of it. But I, I kind of feel like that's a, a pretty fair price for the amount of lumber that that you would get out of that. I think you could saddle quite a few uh, small barns with that amount of lumber. Uh, you know, and of course you've still you've got your time and your your labor and you know, blades for the sawmill, wear on the equipment. Um, you know, there's still labor involved in that, but that that amount of labor is seems to be well worth it in comparison to what you would, you know, receive out of that in, in price versus what you'd get out of it in firewood. But that really kind of surprised me and shocked me about how much the, the sawmill is getting for their services. You know, and you've, I'm sure some of you all in the, in, you know, in the logging and woodhound industry has, has saw the, the meme about, I think it was the Where the Millers movie where, you know, he's talking about how much money he's getting and then she's doing this for this amount of money. And, um, you know, the, the teenage girl, she's like, well, you're, I'm only getting this. And then the guy's like, well, I'm doing this for free. So it's kind of like that with, you know, your, your loggers have to go out and cut these logs. You know, someone has to deliver them to the to the sawmill and then the sawmill they're getting their cut and then you've got the seller who's who's selling this product that's getting their cut and and usually it, it goes up dramatically uh, from each process so if you can be the, the the logger the cutter and the supplier you, you pretty much can reap the benefits of all that you know all that product and, and pricing so, of course, I know not everyone has, you know, a sawmill or has the, the capability or ability to, you know, go out and harvest large logs like, uh, like what we're talking about here. But um, I just wanted to put that out there because I know a lot of y'all have, you know, a lot of acreage with a lot of, um, you know, woods and there's trees down all the time or you might be wanting to clear a spot out, you know, build a barn or, or clear off for a field or something like that. So... It's definitely worth looking into. Of course, if you if they're too big for firewood, you know, and you don't have a sawmill, then chances are you can sell them to a mill or take them to a, one of your local sawyers and have them saw you out some material um, to to work with on the projects that you're doing. Um, but it's definitely uh, it was definitely an eye opener when I started running all these numbers and just kind of seeing what's you know what's in comparison. Um, the end result versus producing the product and so I, I feel like I've I'm making a good decision on building that sawmill for myself because like I said for one I enjoy it um, and two the you know whether it's doing custom orders for customers or you know sawing up the lumber that I have here on hand and using it for projects around the farm or you know cutting up some excess logs and and put them out there for sale and, and sell them to other uh, folks in the area for you know building materials or or whatever they might need so um, just wanted to share that with you all I know that's a little bit different video from from firewood but just something I had on my mind and, and something I've been kind of thinking about in my head for a little while and just kind of wanted to show that to everyone and and that way everybody's kind of got a an idea of how this process works and and you know and where those price jumps and and where all that pricing comes from um you know because i've also talked to a few people around me that um have said you know that, that have sawmills especially like a smaller level sawmill you know that where people would bring them logs from their property and have them mill them um, and i've heard anywhere between 50 cents a board foot to a dollar per board foot just to saw them. Um, so there seems to be some money to be made in that as well without having your own logs to mill. 
You know, I know Woodland Mills went, especially around COVID, Woodland Mills, Wood Miser, the Easy Boardwalk, or Timber King. You know, I think during COVID, there was this huge wait times on sawmills just because, you know, of course, lumber went out the roof. You know, that, that went crazy. And, you know, people were outside more. They were, you know, working on their property more, clearing more logs. And, you know, the, it made that sawmill operation more affordable and on a smaller scale to where, you know, any type of landowner could could purchase one of those sawmills, have it delivered, set it up, and saw their own lumber. So there's definitely a, a hobbyist approach to it as well as a side hustle business approach to it um but in the end it all you know it all comes down to what you want to do and what you have available to do it with so but with that being said i think we're going to wrap this video up and i hope it was educational like i said if there's if there's some things i've missed here that you, you feel like i'm a little bit off base on please by all means let me know in the comments because like i said i'm learning this process too um i haven't even I'm sure I'm gonna screw a lot of stuff up um, and I've not even solved the first board yet. Just uh, just another avenue that I wanna to, want to be able to do here and and um, learn and, and provide some, some material to, to work with. So I appreciate y'all stopping in here and I hope y'all have a great week. And if you would like, comment, um, if you haven't already, go hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully doing a lot more um, sawmill material, you know, coming up this, uh, this summer and fall once I get the sawmill up and going. And, and looking forward to, to going through that process and, and learning it with you all. So, but with that being said, y'all have a good one, and we'll catch you on the next one. We'll see you.